In a recent video, I walked through how I use the performance and memory profiling tools in Chrome to track down and fix both an issue with slow frames and what I referred to as a memory leak. This was in the JavaScript game I am building, but these same concepts and debugging techniques apply to any JavaScript application. The issue was that I was seeing an increasing amount of lag to the point of the game being unusable as more chunks were loaded in. Whilst leaking memory was a part of this issue, and on a larger timeline the leaking memory would have started to become an issue, it likely wasn't actually the increasing memory usage that was causing the problem I was seeing. The actual cause of the slowdown I was seeing was likely the amount of processing power I was using as a result of this increasing number of objects, rather than the amount of memory I was using. This can be described as a performance or CPU leak. This was revealed to me by this familiar face in the comments who, at least in my head, has a reputation for leaving similar insightful comments. Although I was able to find the source of the issue via inspecting the memory in this case, there are going to be other situations where that isn't the best avenue of investigation or perhaps wouldn't work at all. Nor is the approach we used for the other issue of slow frames, where we inspected the flame graph on slow tasks. This approach would be good for finding excessive uses of processing power over a short period in such a way that it would be the cause of slow frames, but we might also be leaking processing power over a longer period that isn't so obvious. I figured it might be interesting then to go on a hunt using a different technique for other performance or CPU leaks in the application, and I suspected that there would be leaks. The reason I suspected this is that I'm making heavy use of RxJS, and despite my best intentions, sometimes I'll end up with a stream that fires way more often than it needs to, resulting in far more processing downstream of that emission than there needs to be. Often I realize and catch these before they are an issue, or an issue becomes apparent because of it, but this is not a reliable way to build software. I need to be able to proactively find any areas where I am wasting processing power, even if the existence of the issue is not obvious. I don't want to have to rely on myself not making mistakes because I will absolutely make mistakes at some point. So we are going to head back to the same performance profiling tools, but this time we are going to ignore all of the stuff we used last time and instead just focus on this bottom up view. This allows us to see which functions are responsible for the highest amount of CPU usage. In the bottom up view, we can sort by either total time or self time. Self time would show us how long was spent in a particular function, and total time would show us how long was spent in a specific function and all of the functions it called. Given that my goal here primarily is to find areas where I have lots of RxJS emissions, likely I'm going to find it more useful to sort by total time as the RxJS code likely completes extremely quickly, but it might be calling things that take a longer time. These first few entries, though large, are uninteresting because the nature of this game and most others is that we have an update loop that essentially triggers everything else. So it's expected that these functions are going to have an extremely high total time as they trigger almost everything else. So just like last time, we're in a bit of a needle in a haystack situation again, and we just need to start looking through this list for anything interesting. Most of the stuff at the top here is internal library stuff, either from Phaser or RxJS. But what is initially somewhat interesting is that a lot of this stuff near the top with reasonably high total times are RxJS related. For example, subject, subscriber, operator, subscriber, async scheduler, and so on. This is not necessarily a problem, but we do know that these are being triggered a lot and leading to work that is taking a significant amount of the total time. Generally, my strategy with this stuff is to look for the code I have written. And the first thing I see here that I have written with a high total time is this next call in the machine outputs file. I have x state state machines and I next a subject with snapshots from those machines, which gives me data about that machine's current state. Almost every item in this game has its own state machine, and so this is certainly a promising area to be highlighted. As a sort of poor man's way to count how many times this subject is being nexted, I added a simple console log. This is not particularly scientific, but it is good enough to see that this subject is being nexted somewhere in the realm of a thousand times a second, certainly enough to make it an obvious concern. We can verify it is likely the number of items and their state machines that is causing this high usage, 
by greatly decreasing the number of items on the screen, and then we see far less console logs. So as an initial solution, I tried this. There is some context lacking here, but it isn't really important for this video. In brief, it is the combustible state machines attached to these items that are causing the problem. And almost all of them are always in the initial state. When they are in the initial state, I don't actually care about them. So this change just doesn't emit snapshots for those machines if they are in the initial state. Now we can see that our console log is only being triggered around 60 times a second, much better than the 1000 we were seeing before. If we run a performance profile again, we can see that machine outputs is now responsible for just a small fraction of the total time when compared to what we were seeing originally. Now our next potential target for optimization could be this get closest in grid function, but at only 0.2% of the total time, there is nothing that appears obviously concerning to me. So I was able to track down this performance leak or CPU leak without there even being anything obviously wrong which goes to show that there is a benefit to understanding the strengths of these various profiling tools and even to using them proactively. Once again, I got a big performance win for a tiny code change and with no detriment to the functionality of the game. If you found this video useful, a like or subscribe before you go would be greatly appreciated and I hope to see you back here again for the next one.